Hello everybody, today is a magnificent day. We are fulfilling something that we don't have in the documentation. There is a tribal knowledge about manifest, like there is Android manifest, iOS manifest, manifest for live updates, manifest for native extensions, manifest for stripping the game engine. Then there is that manifestation tool that Bjorn wrote. And we're gonna talk about this today and show what is what and why do you have to watch for extra spaces in your manifest? Otherwise, nothing gonna build, right? Yeah. Right. Just for those few of you who don't know us, uh, I'm Oleg. And I'm Bjorn. And we work in default. So Android manifest, iOS manifest, stripping manifest, native extension manifest, are those different manifests or is it the same manifest? And why is it tribal knowledge? Well, I mean, we have a bunch of different manifests, as, as you mentioned, the Android manifest and, and anything you enter for iOS, those are like what's been decided by Apple and Google. Uh, but uh, for default, we have a couple of different ones, as you mentioned. Uh, the one we're focusing on today is the app manifest. And the app manifest is a file that you uh, put in your project, linked to from game.projects, game and it will allow you to customize your engine, regardless of if you use native extensions or not. So okay, so there is a manifest for app, manifest for game engine customization. The iOS manifest is a totally separate thing. Android manifest is a totally, th totally separate thing. Yeah. We Do generate those. I mean, you can have your custom Android manifest file, but we generate one and it's mm. from the next release uh, available from the built-ins. So the manifest that we are not covering today, do we have that in the documentation? The Android manifest, yes. What you do is in, in your uh, game.project file, you go to Android, there you can specify your app icons, and there's a link to a manifest file, and that's the Android manifest.xml. That's, that's Google's Google, Google's or Android's file, really, mm -hmm. that specifies everything about an Android application. And it's XML because that's how Google wants it to be, right? Yeah, yeah. It, what it's... about iOS? On iOS, you specify app icons, and then you have the info plist file, which is kind of similar to the Android manifest right. file. But this is an Apple file, and, and we're in no control of the format. Very good. So Android manifest, that's because Google wants it. That's, that's why it's XML. On iOS, the same thing is the info P list. So those are not the manifests that we are talking about today. Today we are talking about app manifest and it's not XML. No. What is it? It's YAML, which is another configuration file format. It's very common among like, yeah, CI systems, uh, Travis and uh, CircleCI and all of those configure using YAML and um, yeah, it's, it's widely used and, and that's the format we've chosen for both the app manifest and also the uh, manifest to specify for a native extension in general. And those are different manifests? Yes, exactly. So for every native extension you create or have in your project, there will be an, a manifest file specifying all of the build and link flags and platform configurations. But we also have the app, app manifest and that's what we're focusing on today. And uh, it's a single file specified in game.project. It defines how you want to customize your engine when it's built. Okay. So it's basically a set of settings per native ext extension and per project. Yeah. And that's why those are different things. Yes, exactly. What about live updates? We also have manifest for live updates. Yeah, we have a settings file for live updates specifying, uh, well, how, how the live, the stripped content, the excluded content in live update, where, where that ends up. Uh, and that's also a separate file. That's a separate file, yes. Live update is something totally different and it needs a separate configuration file. Right, but today we're focusing on the engine customization, which is the app manifest. You specify it in game.project, so you scroll down to the native extensions section of the game.project file. But specify, so the engine doesn't create that for you. You have to create that for the engine, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, it's currently in an alpha state, so it's still experimental, uh, but the format is is set, so we won't change that. 
but the way it's created will will be simplified in the future. You you, you want to be able to create your manifest file from within the editor, but currently that's not possible. For now, you need to create the file on your own, uh, and then specify it here under native extension app manifest, and there's a, a browse tab, browse yeah. button here. Uh, but so how to create it? Before we speak about how, I guess we should cover when. When is that our users need to care about that browse button? Yeah, At which point good. of the of their life cycle? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's especially important if you build for uh, re size restricted uh, platforms. Like if you want to do an instant game, you really need to care about the size of your application. If you do a mobile game, the size of your application is also important. It's less so on desktop, but you should still not ignore the fact that you are able to reduce your executable file. Size. Okay, so if you mo if you want to reduce the size of your application, or rather of the game engine, right, yeah. of the yes. game engine runtime. So yeah. that's that's one of the main uses of the manifest. Yeah. What else can you do in the manifest? Well, uh, for those of you who are using native extensions, you know that when I do a project and a bundle for any platform, you know that the release checkbox has no function. If you have the manifest, if, or unless you have the manifest. Unless you have the manifest file, the release checkbox will not do anything. It will be ignored if you have a native extension in your project, because that will always result in a debug build even though you might check the release checkbox. So that would be another use case for the app manifest, removing the debug version of the engine and, and replacing it with a, a release version. And most of you actually do use native extensions. So when you browse the asset portal and just add extensions, sometimes you'll add not just Lua code, but also C++ or other system code, and meaning that you are using native extensions meaning that when you bundle, bundle your application, you get the debug version of the game engine bundle in, unless you perform the actions further shown in this video. Yeah, that's correct. I guess like 50% of the assets use native code. So, uh, so okay, stripping the engine, uh, removing the debug version of the em engine or rather replacing it with the release version of the engine. As, what are the main difference between release and debug version of, of the runtime? Uh, the differences are small, but I guess the, the most important one is that uh, you still get a console log output in a debug build and you probably want to use that while, while developing your game, but in a release version you don't want all of the, the the print statements you have in your code or the logs from um, from your native extensions to actually show up in in logcat or or in a terminal if you if you run your game that way so that that's like the main that's one of the most important differences okay two uh, reasons to use the manifest okay so uh, so how to actually create uh, a manifest file. Uh, I guess the easiest way nowadays is to use an online tool that I created, uh, the manifestation tool. Um, I'll show it here. It's we conveniently don't have the link from the docs. Uh, I'll make sure that that we update the docs so it links to to this and other rel relevant information. But this, I'd say, is the easiest way to create a manifest file now, and it's up to date with what what we currently support on all our build servers. So default app manifest generator. This tool generates default app manifest that can be used to build a custom engine. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. So there's a bunch of settings here. So if I want to exclude physics, I tick that checkbox. So if I don't use box 2D or bullets in my game, there's no need to have the physics engine in, included in the, uh, in the runtime. That would save us quite a bit of of, kilobytes. Of, uh, kilobytes, yeah. And we can immediately see that when I when I check this box, we saw changes here. So this is the app manifest format right here. So it specifies a bunch of different platforms uh, and which libs to exclude and which ones to instead add. So we exclude all of the 
Bullet and Box 2D uh, physics libs. And we replace those with a null implementation of, of physics. Yeah, right. So again, these are just like internal settings for the engine or rather for whatever the compiler. It's for the, it's for the build system yeah. where, we, where we package the custom engine for you. So this specifies that some libraries should be excluded and some others should be included. So we yeah. exclude physics and add a null implementation, which is basically zero bytes. And this is a per platform. But I guess what our users should care about is that like the checkboxes, yeah, right? So yeah. like, what are you using? Probably most checkboxes are safe to just check. So let's just go through the settings. Yeah, so physics, as we said, that excludes box 2D for 2D physics and bullet for uh, 3D physics. Uh, we have recording functionality built into the engine for desktop builds, so you can record gameplay footage. Probably safe to, che to check. Yeah, if you're not using it, definitely remove it. Uh, the profiler, which is super useful when um, when you uh, develop your the game. game, it's actually not included in the release version mm -hmm. um, of the engine, but uh, sometimes you want to ex make sure to exclude it always. And, yeah. and that's done by the exclude profiler checkbox. If you don't use Facebook, then you should exclude it, of course. And remember that Facebook SDK is included in uh, HTML5 builds and mobile builds. Mm -hmm. So it's not included in desktop builds. So if you build a desktop game, this checkbox has no effect. Sound. I guess most games use sound, but uh, let's say that you're doing more of an application or if you want to run default on a server, then the sound is probably uh, safe to strip. Graphics, that's a bit extreme, but that's for uh, <laughs> headless, I guess. headless versions. Yeah, so if you want to run, run default on a server or in a CI system, then you don't need uh, graphics at all. You don't need input either. So you can exclude using exclude graphics and exclude input. This is actually what happens when I check make headless here. We see that we strip record, sound, graphics, input, and debug. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, headless build is if you download one from from uh, from d.default.com right but let's just as an exercise or maybe as an example think imagine uh, say one of our users shipping a web version of their ludum their game yeah probably they need input they probably need physics probably that's up to you to figure out like if you're using colliders and stuff, yeah. then you don't check the button. But probably record, they don't need that. I'd exclude record. If Facebook, you have no Facebook integration, remove that. And then release, I yeah. guess. And then release, and this will ensure that you, you'll get a release build yeah. of the engine regardless of if you use native extensions. Which is especially important for HTML5 because the smallest your game is, the better. Yeah. yeah. So these three checkboxes are kind of safe for most people. Yeah, and they should mo most of the them map. should be self-explanatory. I mean, exclude physics. Yeah. That's okay. So that's we have the three checkboxes checked. What do yeah. we do now to for this to, to to take effect? Well, the the simplest thing is to to just click download. And what what do we do next? Now I will get a generated .app manifest in my download folder. Uh -huh. So here we have the generated app manifest. Mm -hmm. So I go to game.project, scroll down to native extensions, find the app manifest here, select it, and that's it. When I build now, I will get the custom server, sorry, custom engine built for me. It will be cached uh, and it will be used when I bundle and when I run my game. So this was for the app manifest? to customize the game engine runtime that you're shipping, which is especially important if you're shipping HTML5 project. Your Ludum there playable. But for those of you who use or create native extensions, there is actually a um, documentation about manifest for native extensions. It's here and it's quite good actually, it's self-explanatory. The format is similar to the app manifest, right? Yeah, so it's it's the YAML format and it specifies platforms and, and context and then uh, a bunch of different flags 
uh, or different kinds of settings that we pass to the build server specifically for the the extension in question. So it, it defines which frameworks you want to have access to on, on different platforms, compiler flags, uh, libraries that you need included, custom defines and so on. Uh, and all of this is, I mean, it it's hard to make a generic tool for this because it, uh, which flags you need and which frameworks you need, that's, that's, that's definitely per, per extension. Yeah, so and it's, it, it's up to you as an extension creator to, to actually figure out what you need and what you There is need. a good advice though. I've seen many people on the forums and in the chats suffer from extra spaces. So apparently in this YAML format, yeah, I think it's an indentation sensitive format. So, so you actually need to indent in a certain way. Uh, but if it's spaces or tabs, doesn't matter. But you, you need these to be like in this staggered, uh, staggered way. So platforms and then indented comes the different platforms and then even more indentation and then even more. So, so, so that, that's important to follow. And that's the YAML file format specification. You need to follow that if you want to create an extension manifest or an app manifest. Yeah, watch your invisible symbols. Good, so we've covered all the manifests that we have in the engine. We explained why are all those manifests, different manifests, incompatible formats and incompatible overall, but like we just called them manifest for convenience and because that's what it is, like a settings file. And it's all so far. Yeah. Is it? Good. So if you have any questions, go ask us. If you need more videos on this or any other topic, just request and we'll record that. Thanks for being together with us. Thank you. And thanks for using the phone. See you on the forums. On yeah. default, for default. Well, we'll work for you, but yeah. So manifest.